In this tutorial, we're going to discuss if functions. If functions are used quite often by programmers, and I'll give you a couple of examples. To begin with, imagine you're creating a Pac-Man game. You want to set certain rules. So you'd say if Pac-Man touches the food or eats the food, we give him one point. If Pac-Man touches a ghost, he loses a life. If he has zero lives left, then the game is over and so on. And we can apply the exact same rules to Flappy Bird. If Flappy Bird touches the floor, then it's game over. If he touches the pipe, it's game over. But if he goes through the pipe successfully, he gains a point. If the user taps the screen, Flappy Bird jumps up a little bit and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to create a password and then we're going to ask the user for a password. If the user gives us the password successfully, we're going to say access granted. And if the person is unable to give us the correct password, we're going to say access denied. To begin with, I'm going to create a variable called password. And I'm going to create this as a string and I'm going to call it hello 99. So the password, which is now stored on the system, is hello 99. Now, if this was a real program, this password would be stored somewhere in a database. We're going to ask the user to enter a password. So I'm going to create a variable called password input. So that tells me that this is the one that the user has entered. I'm going to use the input function to allow me to ask the user to enter the password. Now, moving on to the if function. To begin with, we start with the keyword if. The next part of the if function is the actual test or the criteria that we're going to be checking for. So we want to check if password is equal to the password that the user has entered. So we're going to start off by putting in our variable. Now, I'm going to put in two equal signs and I'm going to explain why in a moment. Once we've completed our test, we need to put a colon and press enter. Once you've pressed enter, the program will create an indentation for us. And what we're actually saying is that if this criteria is successful, then we would like whatever is in this indentation to actually execute. So we're just going to print off success or access granted. Okay. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to push my cursor all the way back to the end and type in else and put my colon and press enter. Again, I have an indentation and now I'm going to put the line of code that I wish to execute if this original criteria was unsuccessful. So I'm going to say print access denied. Okay, now I'm going to run this to check to see if this is working. So it's asking me to enter my password and I'm going to put in hello 99, press enter and it says access granted. I'm going to try this again, but this time I'm just going to put anything random, press enter and this time it's telling me access denied. I would like to just go through why I have got two equal signs. To begin with, when we use one equal sign, which I've got here, what we're actually saying is this value or this bit of data needs to be stored inside the variable. So when we're using equals, we're actually saying store this value inside here. But on this line of code in line eight, with the if function, we don't want password to be equal to password input. We don't want that to become the same value. What we actually want is we want to check if they are equivalent. So we're not saying become password input, we're checking 
is password equivalent to password input and what it, what it does is it returns either a true value or a false value if this check is true it will execute whatever is inside the indentation if it is not true so it's false then it will move on to the else and execute this section